right, today I wanted to show what I do for math, um, elementary arithmetic for my Form 1B students. This is my first year student. So we use um, this Rochelle Baburna's um, the Charlotte Mason Elementary Arithmetic series, and this is book one. So yeah, this is a beautiful book. See, it has the mountain on the cover. It's a, a hard hardback book. Um, just very beautiful, very durable. It's got uh, two ribbons in it in case you had a student or two students in different uh, areas. And then the mountain picture on the front that goes with this quote that they have that she picked at the very beginning. Um, from Charlotte Mason's book, Ourselves. It says, the principality of mathematics is a mountainous land, but the air is very fine and health-giving, though some fi people find it too rare for their breathing. It differs from most mountainous countries in this, that you cannot lose your way, and that every step taken is on firm ground. People who seek their work or play in this principality find themselves braced by effort and satisfied with truth. So. Um, math is definitely considered a, uh, an important part of the feast of, of education that Charlotte Mason lays out. Um, it is different than most of the other subjects in that it's not really taught with um, living books in the same way. Um, it's not, yeah, we're not reading stories and uh, gleaning math from those, so it's more um, direct, I guess. So anyways, I was hoping to walk through what a lesson is like in this book. Um, because I, I think I mentioned in my video where I was talking about all my, um, curriculum choices, book choices for, for year one, uh, that it's very talkative. And so, because this is, this is like the teacher book, I guess you'd say. So I'm holding this book and then my, uh, child has access to the manipulatives. Um, and, uh, so we, and then we work through them. So we're talking through them. It's not just three plus four equals and, you know, like a worksheet with lots of things to fill in. He's thinking through real life kind of scenarios and finding uh, what the numbers are within within those, you know, kind of word problems. I remember when I was growing up and there were uh, some people who had difficulty with word problems because it wasn't laid out for them and what that, uh, like laid out in a problem on a worksheet, it was different because it was talking and this is almost like all word problems. And I think the problem was they had a disconnect between numbers on a page and reality when, you know, all of these numbers are supposed to be helpful to us and real. So um, I think the, uh, I think that that's really good the way she has it set up. Okay, so here is the number 24. So she's, we've gone through the numbers one at a time. And then when we get to like 10 and 20, um, it kind of, the lesson is a little bit different and, you know, we're, uh, also having to line up the tens and the unit spot. Anyways, okay, so here's, you go through and the first thing is the symbol for the idea. And so you um, talk about like, first you talk about what, what comes after 23 and usually, I think your child will usually know, but you can talk about, you know, when we had 20 and then we added one more, what was that? And when we had one more, that was, what was that? Um, and they have some uh, examples of that and then we make 24 with something how many 10 bundles how many units make 24 what are this what does the two and the four stand for and uh, we draw it or I, I'll draw it on the board and show that number and then the child will write it on the board and in their math notebook so they see they make that connection between the number it's a, it's the symbol it's not just yeah it's it's not just those um <laughs> how do you say it even it doesn't just mean itself it's is 24 of something and the symbol just represents. Like 24 is only two, you know, it's two numbers, but there's many more things that it represents. So um, helping them have connections with what each of these numbers means and building up that, uh, you know, the identification of that tens and units place. What do those 10 bundles, what are they? So we have 10 bundles, we have 10 bundles um, in coins, it's a dime. Um, we have like uh, the craft stick, so we'll have them tied up or we have, um, yeah, so yeah, units and bundles. I feel like I'm explaining this very badly. <laughs> okay, and then, so that's like the first area. And then the next thing is it has sums. And so it has lots of different problems where 24 is used. So you, they're not usually like, you know, what is this plus this? And you know, it's 24 because we're doing 24. It's working with 24. So like, here's one of the questions. You have 24 pencils all together. If 12 are in the desk drawer, how many are on the desktop? 
And so you're finding out, you, you know that 24 is one of the, one of the uh, answers, I guess, one of the variables. And so you work through lots of these and you're kind of discovering what, what things make 24. And then, so you have several sums like that and those are all manipulative based. Like sometimes your child or um, sometimes my child does, can figure it out. But usually when you've just introduced it, um, those are, yeah, since it's new, they have to work with the manipulatives to find out. Also, my child is kind of, you know, once we got past 10, that was kind of uh, something scary or, or they're kind of in awe of that. It seems like a whole lot. And then the same thing when we've gotten past 20 now. And so yeah, I'm just, I've been amazed at how um, when the concepts are new, they can be very um, big. And, but as time goes on, they just become more familiar. So I guess that's how it is with a lot of things. But I, when we have kind of the review problems, the review work, it's so much easier for them. And so it's really, it's really cool. Okay. And then it gets to a counting section. So we just have some practicing, um, counting back and forward. So we count out 24 of something. And then we say how many 10 bundles in units again. And then we do how many, how many twos in 24? Let's count by twos. And so they have all their manipulatives there of 24 and they're putting them into groups of two. And then we say how many threes in 24? We put them in groups of three and then we count by threes. Um, and we can do it slowly because sometimes, yeah, sometimes he is, doesn't know what that means to count by threes or something. So we'll, we'll um, work with it, you know? Uh, and then we do how many groups of four? And then always there's the count up and then count backwards. Um, and then there is, this is called review and rapid oral work. And it has, this is just lots of numbers. So this is no longer, you know, um, focused on 24. It's just different kinds of questions. So here's a couple of examples. There are four ducks and 14 ducklings swimming on the pond. How many all together? That's one, let's see. Madison is setting the table for 12 people. She has put out nine plates. How many more plates does she need? And so they, they can use manipulatives or not. It's either way. I find that, yeah, here, when we're doing review, most of them, or um, m many of them at least, uh, he doesn't need the manipulatives. But uh, sometimes I get him to show me anyways. Just depends on, if it seems like he's guessing that I want to, him to work with the manipulatives, because I don't want it to be a thing where we think that it's inexact, because math is, either the answer is correct or it's incorrect. There's not any gray area, there's not, almost and, and charlotte mason has very specific instructions not to tell children that that's almost correct because it's not <laughs> uh, math is one of the places where there is absolute truth and it's it's one of the ways that god has revealed to us that there is absolute truth because if it's wrong it's wrong and it can be very dangerous for people who have mathematical jobs to do it incorrectly so my husband was giving uh, my son the example of people who work on building a bridge and if they just get things that are almost right then suddenly, uh, someday, that bridge is no longer going to hold the people that it needs to hold, and it's going to be very catastrophic. <laughs> okay, and then here is a new section. She has these at the bottom of the review and rapid oral work that is, um, I feel like we didn't have these for several lessons, but now it's been added on, and um, so this might be the, the rapid oral work. So it has these things where it's like seven and three, so you you do, I think you do quickly seven cups plus three cups, and then you do seven cups minus three cups. And um, there's always the encouragement to um, have your child, it says, yeah, be sure to require fully worded answers. So they find the answer and then they say the whole thing together like a, like a sentence or an equation. So seven plus three equals 10. So you have them say the whole thing and they can use the, whatever it is, the cups or buttons or whatever, they can say that if they want to, but especially having the whole thing. Now I've noticed my son a lot likes to um, he generally likes to, whichever way the problem's going, he likes to do this plus this. So if you say how many remain, okay, here's one that says, uh, Diana wants to paint, to plant 16 tulip bulbs. She has already planted eight bulbs. How many remain to be planted? So once he finds out the answer is eight, then he'll want to say because eight and eight make 16. He doesn't like to say it the other way, like 16, uh, minus eight that have already been planted equals eight left to be planted. And that's fine because that's that's a great association um, to find that you know plus and minus you really you're just moving around the the numbers in the equation and it does eight plus eight equals sixteen is the same thing as sixteen minus eight equals eight so so that's really good for him to be able to to do that and that's fine if he wants to say it that way I do not care 
Okay, and then the last portion of this lesson is called pure number and it says optional. And so this, I think they are encouraged to uh, not use manipulatives. It's supposed to be just pure number. And um, so we, we usually try and do them. Um, I think uh, Rochelle Baborna, she says, do them if your child is especially bright that day. I don't, I don't know if I can always tell. <laughs> Um, so we just usually try them and then if it's not going well, then we'll, maybe we'll move on. But, um, these are, yeah, I'll give you an example of them. Here's one. How many threes and six? So sometimes they're worded kind of differently. It doesn't have the cups or buttons or, you know, ducklings. How many threes and six? How many twos and six? Five plus 12 equals, and then here's a couple. If you take 10 away from 15, what remains? If you take 10 away from 20, what remains? And uh, yeah, I, yeah, we just did this because we're like halfway through lesson 25 now. And yeah, he, he liked those questions about if you take 10 away. He's really, um, now that we're moving up and we're past 20, I think he, he is getting more used to the tens and the fives and how those things are kind of easier to count in a way. So I, I think he liked that, the 10 and 15 and 20. Um, anyway, so that's how they, the kind of the lessons go and um, I'll show some of the manipulatives. Um, so we use, yeah, we use some different ones and then um, I think I'm going to make a second part of this video that I'm going to show how we have also one of our manipulatives that she doesn't suggest but that we're using is uh, abacus. So this is a Sorbonne abacus and uh, it has this little thing. It's meant to be used flat on the table. So, um, because the the beads are are loose on it, and you have to be able to have them still. So I'll have to show it to you flat on the table. But okay, here I just wanted to show the different kinds of manipulatives we use to go with our math book. So here's our Charlotte Mason Elementary Arithmetic Book One by Rochelle Baborna. So this is for my Year One student, and uh, sometimes her lessons actually call for certain things. So like she has lessons that call for coins. We've got lots of coins here. Um, she has lessons that call for buttons. So we've got buttons. Um, we do different things with buttons. So here's the abacus. We use the abacus. Um, we've got, okay, and this is how we bundle the buttons. Um, so this is like a 10 bundle for buttons and so they can slip them on and off easily. Have ones and bundles. Um, we have craft sticks. So we've got, um, you know, 10 bundles. Oops, that's a different one. You know, 10 bundles and units for craft sticks. So we're able to say like, you know, how do we make 24? Here's, you know, two tens and four units, that kind of thing. And then we can take them apart if we need to break them apart for a different kind of equation. Um, same thing with the buttons. We can take those apart. We can take them off, put them back on. Um, I do try to make, you know, make them take it. They're going to take it apart, then have them take the whole thing off, not leave eight on there. And then it looks like a 10 bundle, but it's not. I also like pushing them apart into uh, groups of five because that's just easier to visualize. Okay. And then we also have these, um, these kind of sticks, which she... Rochelle Baborna, she's very, uh, very much talked about how you do not have to have specialized tools and these are even better, but um, I, I got these for free somewhere and uh, so I thought they would be nice to use sometimes with the, you know, so he can, he can count them out. And he also, some of the problems he worked, he had the 10 and he would cover up, you know, if it was like, say if you had 20 minus two and he took away the two like this or took away six and then he counted out how many were left. And uh, so, you know, it worked well or he could trade them out for the for the ones, but it's just a nice, another manipulative to have available. Um, and then that also, we also have these hundreds. We haven't gotten to the hundreds yet though. So. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay. I wanted to show too what some of our, I have these print offs that I use. So these are like 10 blocks. I like these because they have groups of tens, but also groups of five within them. So if we're doing counting, he can line things up in a certain way and he knows I, i'm hoping that he'll this will be another way for him to visualize 10 so like he could see obviously he could see that this if this is all full then that's a 10 and if there's two more then that's 10 and two so we try and think in groups of 10 and then say if there were two missing my hope is that he would be able to tell that that's a five and three or that it's a 10 
less two, and so there's eight left, that kind of thing. I really want him to get hold of those um, number bonds or, yeah, pairs of 10. Okay, and then here is, all right, here's another kind of um, thing. I just have these laminated uh, thing that we use. And so here we could say, you know, I don't know, 25. Um, if you have 25 and then you have, uh, I don't know, six. 25 splits into six and how many? So if you say 25 minus six or six plus what equals 25? And they can be able to count those kinds of things out. And so we can, we can also write in that with dry erase or wet erase marker either way. And I've got little small ones. Here's another way to break things down and think about tens. So you could say, yeah, seven plus seven equals what? And they might be able to figure that out in different ways. But one way to think about it is seven plus how many more do we need to get to 10? So, and this is how I worked it with them. Seven plus three is 10. And then how many left after you use those three, how many is left from seven? And that's another four. So then you have 10 and four is 14. So that's just a way to use that. Um, yeah, I think I've just got yeah multiple ones here so that we could write, write in and fill them in like that. That's another way I have um, been able to, if I'm taking care of another child, I can kind of make a few of those and then he's able to use manipulatives and fill them in while I'm away, like changing a diaper for a minute um, without it being a worksheet exactly. So it's kind of, uh, he's able to use different kinds of things, buttons or coins and, and figure it out. So, so yeah, I enjoy that. All right. Okay, I just wanted to add a few extra things that I forgot to talk about. Um, that go with this book. Um, so this is Rochelle Baborna's, you know, direct series, but she also has, I think she came out with this first. So she has this DVD, Living Math, A Guided Journey with Rochelle Baborna and Sonia Schaefer. Um, and then this is a book guide, um, Mathematics, an Instrument of Living Teaching. So both of these are sold by Simply Charlotte Mason. And this kind of goes through the, um, the pedagogy, like, why Charlotte Mason's method uh, does math this way, how to do it, because it's really a, a totally different thing than what I experienced in school with math. So I feel like it's a lot more, um, a, a lot of Charlotte Mason is a lot more the connections the child makes and um, helping them, equipping them to discover things for themselves, because it means so much more to them to the, uh, if they understand the relations within themselves, rather than you, rather than you telling them direct things of like you must learn this thing, um, so helping them, guiding them to discovery and um, helping them make those connections. So, yeah, I definitely recommend those. I have a note on the back here. It says uh, disc one, episodes one through four is for the first year. So I haven't made it all the way through this because this is really. This has two discs in it, and it's really a, um, this as well, this is a guide through all of the years of math. So she, what she was saying before she made this, and she's made the first three years of, of math books, but before she made that, what she's saying is you can use this as a guide to design your own math through all the years, or you could um, use, so this is something I was thinking of early on, this is a Singapore Math Primary Mathematics US Edition. Um, and I, I still reference this some, um, like it's got these, uh, this kind of notation in it. I like that where they break it down into the different things. Um, and I've made some of my uh, sheets that I laminate are like that. Um, and this has kind of, you know, the ways the children are thinking through it. So it's got some cool stuff like that. Um, but I believe you could truly, you could use something like this, which is just, you know, not, it's not like, direct Charlotte Mason math, but you could use the, the pedagogy and go through it in a way that would be conducive to Charlotte Mason method. Um, so I think that's good. She also has some things that she recommends that you could get instead of, instead of these, you could use some of these. Um, this is Ray's new primary arithmetic. And um, this just has, it's, it, you wouldn't use it, like give it to your child and have them work through all these things, but it's got examples of different kinds of questions you could ask and uh, to be able to, to practice. So those, those different kinds of, of practice things. So here is, there's a little quote I wanted to read. Let's see. So here's a quote from Charlotte Mason. It says, carefully graduated teaching and daily mental effort on the child's part 
at this early stage may be the means of developing real mathematical power and will certainly promote the habits of concentration and effort of mind. So there's multiple things that are going on with math and um, some of it is that concentration. So talking through those problems, that's not necessarily a real natural thing. And I definitely, my child can get uh, wiggly or um, get distracted, but yeah, having that uh, growing of attention and bringing back to to the, the task at hand, that, you know, attention is one of the biggest habits that Charlotte Mason wants children to develop. So I think it works really well. Um, yeah, she, uh, Rochelle Bob recommended this and she also recommended, um, oh, what are they called? Uh, Rainbow Resource sells them and they're like, it's three books and it's like grades three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. And they are not very expensive. They're like $15 each. So you could have the whole set for $45 brand new from Rainbow Resource. And, um, and once again, you wouldn't use it, like give them it, give it to them as a workbook and have them work through like two pages per day. You would be using the Charlotte Mason pedagogy and going through it more with your child. Um, but so those are valuable resources if you don't want to go all in on this book. This book, she's basically taken those kinds of problems uh, like are in here and she has made it all just open and go. It's, you know, you open it, everything is right there. The directions are there for the teacher. You know, you're the one holding this book and your child is the one working with the manipulatives and working through the problems. And um, it's, I really have liked this so far. It's It's been really good. This makes it very easy, so I, I enjoy this, but there are other ways to do it, and they, this is a great resource, and I'm sure I'll be coming back to this time and again. I, Like I said, I've only been in the beginning of this one or this one, because this is all the way through, so, you know, probably I should read more of this and get a, a big, a big view of the whole 12-year, you know, vision, but um, right now I, I'm good with just being, you know, one step ahead and just having the first year stuff and seeing some of what we're going to do next year, where we're going in the elementary years. So, but yeah, I definitely, I do think this is worth the money. I have enjoyed it. It's been very easy. You know, with Charlotte Mason education, there's so many subjects that um, it can be a lot to like personally prep each one. So having tools like this that are just all ready to go are, um, I I'm very thankful that she made this, that she put the time in and uh, all, all into making this. So, yep, uh, I definitely recommend it. Uh, yeah, so. Tune in for that and how I'll talk about how I think the abacus is a nice um, tool and why I thought it was worth adding to um, and, and why it fits with a Charlotte Mason math approach and Charlotte Mason education. So um, yeah, I hope you come back for that video. <laughs> All right. Bye.